grade 8 math number 11.3b. We're going to talk about using the angle-angle similarity postulate. You remember what a postulate is? We talked about this before in math. When we want to prove something, we use definitions, theorems, axioms, or postulates. And we've talked about this. And a postulate's a true statement that doesn't need to be proved. And theorems and axioms come from postulates. So here's the angle-angle, or AA, similarity postulate. It says if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar. We can't just look at figures and say they're similar. We need deductive reasoning to show, to prove the figures meet the definition of similarity. You know, like Sherlock Holmes. If only one pair of corresponding angles of two triangles are congruent, we must find the measure of the third angle. We need a second pair of congruent angles to see if they're similar. Finding that third angle may show us the second congruent pair. All right? So take a look at these two triangles right here. We've got these two triangles that I've drawn. We want to find out if they're similar. And we can see that triangle ABC has got an angle of 100 degrees and an angle B of 45 degrees. Well, triangle DEF has a 100 degree angle and a 35 degree angle. Are they similar? Well, we only see one pair of congruent angles. See that? The 100 degrees and the 100 degrees? These are the only corresponding congruent ones right here. See that? We need to find the missing third angle measure for each triangle to know if they're similar. So we need to find out the measure of angle C and the measure of angle E to find out if they're similar. So the triangle sum theorem says the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees. So we substitute 100 degrees for measure of angle 1 and 45 degrees for the measure of angle 2 and then we put measure of angle 3 as the measure of angle C. See that? And now we've got our linear equation and we know they equal 180 degrees so we combine the like terms the 100 degrees plus the 45 degrees and we get 145 degrees. Now to get this measure of angle C by itself on one side to isolate it to one side of the equal sign we subtract 145 degrees from each side that creates a zero pair here and it's eliminated and 180 minus 145 is 35 degrees so we know the measure of angle C is 35 degrees okay now we need to do it for the second one 100 degrees right here measure of angle D and 35 degrees and the measure of angle E are going to equal 180 degrees. We combine the like terms and get 135 degrees plus the measure of angle E equals 180 degrees. We subtract that 135 degrees from each side. This creates a zero pair and it's eliminated. The measure of angle E drops down and it's isolated to one side of the equal sign. 180 degrees minus 135 degrees is 45 degrees. So now we know this one is 45 degrees. Now look, we've got 100 degrees, 35 degrees, and 45 degrees. Because at least two corresponding angles are congruent, the triangles are similar. See? And we've proven it. We know that it's true now. All right? Now, what about right triangles? Are they similar? Are they all similar because they're right triangles? Well, look at these three that I drew, and I could have drawn hundreds. Depending on the height of this side and the length of this base, they could be all different measurements. This one has a 72 degree angle up here, but this one has an 80 degree because this is shorter and that is longer. This one has a 47 degree angle up here because it's taller here and shorter here. See? That one's 43 degrees in this corner, this in that angle, and this one's 18 degrees, and that's 10 degrees. They're all different, aren't they? So we still need two congruent angle measures because right triangles can have many different angle measures. Even though they share that 90 degree angle, the other angles could be all different. Now what about equilateral triangles? Yes, even equilateral triangles. The angle-angle, the AA similarity postulate holds for right triangles and equilateral triangles too. Okay? Alright, that was a mouthful. I hope you got it. 
I hope you understand about the proofs and the theorems and postulates and stuff that we've talked about. I hope you're doing okay. We're going to keep going. Stick with me. We're going to get through this, and we're going to talk about missing angle measures in triangles in the next video. Okay? I'll talk to you later. Bye.